Hey guys, welcome back. It's time to science again. Today, let's talk about cell membranes. Our essential question for this particular video is going to be, how does the structure of the cell membrane relate to its many functions in maintaining homeostasis? Let's take a quick moment to review from our last unit. We talked about cell membranes very briefly. We said that all cells have a cell membrane and that the cell membrane is the same as the plasma membrane. So you'll see both of these words used and they're referring to the same structure that in animal cells and protozoan cells is on the outside of the cell or in things like plants, fungi like mushrooms and bacteria, prokaryotes, that cell membrane is going to be just inside the cell wall. Okay, so let's start by modeling. And in this model, I have a bowl, and this is just to catch anything that falls through. I have a sifter, and then I have a little beaker here. And this beaker is a mixture of rice and sugar, just plain old white rice and plain old white sugar like you'd find in your kitchen. I'm going to pour this mixture into the sifter and I want you to make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen when I pour this mixture into the sifter? All right, let's try it and see what happens. Going to give my sifter just a little shake here. All right, and then I'm going to set it off to the side here. Let's see if I can kind of get it. Mm, it's not going to balance, so I'll just hold it. Okay, so let's look at what we have here. Let me zoom in, see if we can get it better. There we go. So in our sifter, we have the rice grains. And we also have some sugar that didn't quite make it through yet. In our bowl, we have all sugar and there are no rice grains at all in this bowl. So what conclusion can you draw from this evidence? The conclusion I draw is that the sifter only allows certain substances to pass through. In this case, the sifter allows sugar to pass through, but not rice. So small molecules can pass through while these larger molecules are stuck inside the sifter. Well, did you know that a cell membrane is a lot like a sifter? Let's go back to our notes and let's record some of this information. Now to remind myself about this experiment that we've just done, I have drawn a picture of it. So I have my sifter here with my sugar and rice grains in it. And I've shown that the sifter is allowing the sugar to fall through into the bowl, but the rice can't get through. When we have structures that allow some things to get through, we call those structures permeable. To be permeable means that substances are able to pass through. However, in the case of our sifter, only some substances got through. So that means that we can apply the term semi. And semi is a term that means partial. In other words, only certain things are possible in that particular situation. So when it comes to cells, we're going to combine these two words together, semi and permeable, and we're going to get the word semi-permeable. Semi-permeable describes the structure of a cell membrane in that only some substances are able to cross the cell membrane. So just like our sifter, some molecules can get into a cell, some molecules could get back out of a cell, and some molecules like the rice can't get in or out.
So let's look at the specific structure of a cell membrane now. Now it's important, just like we mentioned a minute ago, that all cells, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, have cell membranes, and these cell membranes pretty much have the same structure across all cells. Okay, so we're going to build a model of the cell membrane. What I have here is a model card that has space for outside of the cell, and then we have a space for inside of the cell. So this is where mitochondria and the nucleus will be if it's a pro or if it's a eukaryote. But if it's a prokaryote, this is where DNA ribosomes will be. Remember, there's no membrane-bound organelles in a prokaryote. Outside the cell, this is whatever environment. So this could be the human environment. So if it's a muscle cell, this would be the fluid and other cells around it. If this was a protozoan, like amoeba that lives in a pond, this would be pond water. So there's four components that you need to know in a cell membrane. And I'm going to represent those with these clothespins, tiny beads, pipe cleaners, and these funny looking plastic swirly things. This is called a tangle, so that's how I'm going to refer to it when we're building the model. All right, so these funky looking clothespin things in a cell membrane arrange themselves all together just like this. You'll notice that they look like they have a head and two tails. We're going to talk more about that in just a moment. Their little tails like to line up next to each other with their heads pointed outward. All right, I'm going to stop there. The next part of the cell is sometimes these little tails like to get tangled up with each other. So they have to be separated by another substance that keeps them apart. So we're going to use the beads to model that substance. And there would be more in there than what I'm modeling. Next up, we have to have something out here to send signals. So I have this little structure that has some pipe cleaners on it. They kind of look like antenna. So we're going to add this in there. And then you have to have tunnels because right now not much can get through here. So the cell membrane is going to have tunnels. And in this case, I'm going to use my tangle to represent my tunnel. Okay, so this looks pretty confusing, but let's break down the parts and it'll make hopefully a little bit more sense. Let's start with these little clothespin things. These clothespins are representing something called a phospholipid. So if we go back to our notes, phospholipids, we said, have a head and two tails. The little head part loves water. The way in science that we say loves water is hydrophilic. Hydro means water and philic comes from the Greek word philia, which means to love. That means that these heads will always be hanging out near water. The two tails, on the other hand, they hate water. So that means that they are hydrophobic. Again, hydro means water, and phobic comes from phobia, so that is a fear. So the tails dislike water. 